If you want to make cool renders like this one and this one, you're going to need to make some sort of wet concrete or asphalt. Those reflections just look awesome. And after making this animation recently, I figured out some techniques to make wet asphalt really simply. So make sure you stick around so you know how to do that. Anyways, let's get into it. To start off with, we need a base material. The simplest way to do this is go on Ambient CG, look up asphalt, download the 4K res PBR texture. Then once you're back in Blender and you've got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can just press Control Shift T. And now all we have to do is select the PBR maps that you downloaded and everything will set up how we want it to. But we're gonna change three things on this material before we add any water on it, just to make it look better. So first of all, open up another window, go into your UV editor, make sure you apply the scale of your object, go into edit mode, press A to select everything, do the usual U, Q projection, and then scale it up till it's about the size you want. Oh, also you can make this base material however you want. For my original material here, I just mixed a couple of images together using textures.com pictures. If you wanna know more about how to do that, check out this video here. Anyways, now that this asphalt is tiled a bit more, we wanna add in a color ramp just so we can dial in the roughness. So once we add that in there, we can control shift left click with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. And now we can see what this color ramp's doing. So what we wanna do is we just want to bring up this contrast because if you think about it no matter your base material it's going to be wet because we're putting in a wet environment so we want to bring up that roughness a bit and make it more high contrast so we can bring up that black and you can start to see over here these colors change now my biggest tip is change this black value to something like 0.05 because you don't want your concrete to be completely reflective and then we can bring these close together we get some contrast and our material will look a bit more shiny overall. Now, lastly, we're gonna add displacement to this material so that we actually get ups and downs and so that when we add these puddles in, they can be lower than the asphalt. So to do that, we'll go into our material settings, change this from displacement to displacement and bump, go into our render settings, change this feature set from supported to experimental. Now, what this lets us do is go into modifiers, add in a subdiv modifier, Change to simple, and now we've got this extra button of subdivision surface. And now we should have some displacement on our material. However, it looks a little bit choppy, and that's because if we go back into our render settings, go to subdivision, so we can change this number, which the lower it is, the higher quality the subdivision will be. So of course for our render, it's one, but for our viewport, we can also change it to one, and we'll see what it'll actually look like in our render, which is a lot higher quality. So maybe we'll just put it at something like two, and now we can see that of course looks completely over the top. So what we need to do is change this scale in our material to something like 0.02. Now our asphalt material is set up and just remember you can do this for any PBR texture and it will look pretty good It just looks like any normal material But to get it to look cool and get these awesome reflections that the puddles add we need to do a couple of things Firstly, we need to actually make this water material So what I like to do is just add in a glass BSDF and change this IOR Which is the index of refraction and I'll put that to 1.333 Which is more accurate to what water looks like and so now we have our water water except it's pretty flat and boring so we need to change that real quick add in a noise texture Control t to get those mapping nodes on it make sure it's set to uv plug this into the normal add a bump map plug it into the high make sure you can actually see what you're doing and hey now our water looks less flat however that's too intense we need to change that a bit maybe we can up the scale as well i'll up the detail and the roughness just a little bit and then of course bring this strength back and the distance as well now our water does look a bit weird right now and i just realized it's because of displacement is still plugged in so if we disconnect that that's actually what our water will look like and that's pretty good so let's move on to mixing these two together so by now you probably know how to mix two shaders together you just grab a mix shader plug it in here and then use something like a noise texture to decide where either of them are placed however that result will end up looking okay but not super realistic if you look at a puddle you'll see it's not just straight lines it's a bit rough and also sometimes the original material like our asphalt is poking out the top of the puddle because it's bumpy to do that we're actually going to mix these together twice using the mix shader we added in go here then i'm going to grab a noise texture do the control t make sure it's uv and then plug this into the factor and use a color ramp let's control shift left click on the color ramp and just go through the same thing we did before for here just you know changing a couple of the settings bring up the detail bring up the roughness and then we need to bring up this contrast Currently, our color ramp is doing the opposite of what we want. Let's set this back and let's bring up this white and now bring up the black. 
And now you can see every so often we've got a little bit of the ash felt poking through. It looks a bit weird, of course, because of the displacement. If we take that out, it looks pretty good. Um, of course, we can change a couple of these things later, but let's just ma finish making this, this material, shall we? Add in a mixed shader after this one. Plug this BSDF in here. And now we can control the factor of where our puddles are being added. Let's do that same thing again. Now we need to change some settings. So let's bring this scale down. These puddles are a bit bigger. Bring this contrast up a lot more. Okay, so our color ramp is doing the right thing, but it's doing the opposite. So if we just switch these, that should be good. So now we have some pretty nice puddles. Of course, these puddles are a little bit splatchy, so we could maybe bring back the roughness and you'll see, there we go, there's some more fully formed puddles. So there you go, there's a really cool material, but to get it to that extra level, let's use the displacement to our favor. So currently, all that's going into this displacement is the map we got from our PBR texture, but we also want to mix in this noise texture, so where our puddles are, it's lower down. So to do that, you can just add in a mix color node right here. Control shift left click. I always like doing that just to see what I'm doing. I change this to multiply. And then if we grab this, chuck this in B, change this factor up to one. Now what we're seeing here is basically just this same noise texture multiplied over the top of the PBR. But what it's doing right now is the displacement will just be making the puddles go up and everything else go down. So that's not what we want. We need to duplicate this color ramp and then flip this one around, keeping it the same. Now use this one as B. Now, if we have a look at this, you can see the black is where the puddles are. So it's gonna be going down and we've still got our original PBR texture in here. And if we wanna even emphasize that a bit more, we can add in a color ramp and bring out those pebbles a bit more. Another thing you might want to do is just increase the contrast on this color ramp here that's going into the displacement, just bringing that white up even further, just to really make sure that it's only where the puddle is that there's no displacement. So now if we bring this scale up to something like 0.1, you can see our asphalt is now raised and it goes down into the puddle. So there you go, there's how to make a wet asphalt material that looks really cool. And as I said before, in so many like reference images that I have on Pinterest and whatever, there's this material. So it's really good to be able to make. And this video is a little bit long, but that's just because I wanted to make sure you knew how to do this. It's actually pretty easy to make once you know the techniques and everything. And then you end up with something really cool like this, where no matter what else you add, you can add a car, blah, blah, blah. It just looks good. So um, thanks for watching. Sorry there hasn't been many videos recently. I've been working on lots of stuff and life's happened and all that. But um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this one. There'll definitely be one video coming out soon on how I made this. So make sure you subscribe for that. And uh, yeah, keep going with Blender. You got this.